Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome to lecture 11 of module 3 uh, of the course called Game Theory and Economics. Uh, let me just briefly recapitulate what we have been doing in this uh, course so far. In the last lecture, we have started uh, discussing the theory of auctions in game theory. And uh, so the first auction that we are discussing here is the auction which is known as the second price sealed bid auction. This is just one of the different kinds of auctions that are used. Uh, in particular, auctions are used to allocate a kind of precious good or an article uh, among different people. So there might be different contending parties who will like to have that article and they have different valuation of that article. Uh, what the auctioneer or the person who decides who will get the article does is to that he uh, collects bids from different people and uh, allocates that article to that person who submits the highest bid. Uh, in sec second price seal bid auction, <coughs> obviously bids of other people are not known uh, to any particular uh, bidder <coughs> and when a particular person is decided to be the that person who has submitted the highest bid, he gets the object, but the price that he pays is not equal to the bid that he has submitted. In fact, the price that he pays is the highest bid of the set of people uh, which can be selected if he is taken out of the set of bidders. That is, uh, the price that the person who gets the object pays is the highest bid uh, of the other people uh, besides, beside him, besides himself. So that is what is known as second price sale bid auction. <coughs> and so uh, following will be the uh, payoff here. Here if B i is greater than B bar, then this person is getting the object and the price that he pays is B bar, where B bar i is the bid submitted by i and B bar is the highest bid uh, so this is the case if b i is greater than b bar however uh, person i will get the object not only in this case but also in the case when b i is equal to b bar. So, if b i is equal to b bar and i is less than the indexes of people submitting viva. So, it is possible that the highest bidder that is I <coughs> has submitted a bid which is same as the bid of the 
highest bidder if he is taken out of the group. In that case, he will get the object, he may get the object if his index that is i is less than the indexes of the other people, which means that he values the object more than the other people. Uh, but this is the case, in these cases I will get the object, if I does not get the object he gets 0. So, we write the payoff is 0 otherwise. Otherwise means if b i is less than b bar or if b i is equal to b bar, but i is greater than the indexes of the people submitting b bar. So, this is the setting. Now, what will be the set of Nash equilibria in this case, in this particular uh, second uh, price auction? So, there can be several Nash equilibrium in this uh, as auction. A particular Nash equilibrium that may seem very natural is this one. Uh, the speciality of this Nash equilibrium is very obvious. Each person is submitting the bid which is equal to his or her valuation. Uh, in this case, the person 1 will get the object and the price that he will pay is equal to V2, V2 is the second highest uh, bid here. So, this is his payoff V1 minus V2. For others, uh, payoff is 0. So, this is I am claiming that this is a Nash equilibrium. Why? Uh, why this is Nash equilibrium is because if player 1 deviates, suppose he deviates and bids something more, something more than v1 which is equal to v1 here. So, if he bids more than v1, then he is still getting the object and uh, his payoff remains the same. So, by bidding more you are not improving your payoff. If he bids less, then as long as this less bid is more than v2, again his uh, payoff is remaining the same. If he bids less than v2, uh, then he does not get the object and then his payoff becomes 0, uh, which is strictly worse off. So, by changing uh, the bid, player 1 is not uh, better off. So, that is why uh, from player 1's point of view, he is doing the optimal thing. Uh, what about other players? If any other player, suppose player 2 bids more than V2, uh, as long as he is bidding less than V1 or equal to V1, he is not getting the object. So, his payoff is remaining 0. He can get the object if he bids more than V1, but if he bids more than V1, if B2 is more than v1 then what is the payoff it is v2 which is his valuation minus v1 because in that case the second highest is v1 and which we know is less than 0. Uh, so, uh, by player 1 by deviating and bidding something more than v2 is not better off, he can be strictly worse off. And obviously, by bidding less uh, he does not make any difference to the outcome. So, 
his payoff remains at 0. And this kind of uh, logic can be extended for other people also, other bidders also. As long as they are bidding uh, less than or equal to V1, their payoff is going to remain at 0. If they bid more than uh, V1, then uh, they can get the object, but the payoff become ne uh, becomes negative. So, this is, uh, this is why this is a Nash equilibrium. So, everybody bidding uh, his or her valuation is a Nash equilibrium and in this particular Nash equilibrium player 1 is getting the object. But as I uh, just said that uh, the number of Nash equilibria in this game are infinite, there can be infinite number of Nash equilibrium. One particular Nash equilibrium that is of interest is the following. this. Uh, here in short what is happening is that player 1 is submitting a bid which is equal to V2, player 2 is submitting a bid which is equal to V1 and other players are submitting bids uh, which are less than V2, strictly less than V2. Uh, I am claiming that this is a Nash equilibrium. <coughs> Why this is so? <coughs> First observe that in this uh, particular configuration of bids, uh, it is player 2's bid which is V1 which is the highest. So, player 2 gets the object, but uh, what is his payoff? It is V2 minus V2 because player 1 has submitted the second highest bid which is in fact V2 and so player 2's payoff from this uh, uh, from this equilibrium uh, set of actions is 0. What is player 1's uh, payoff? Player 1 is not getting the object, so it is anyway 0 and this is true for other players also. Now, in this case, if player 2 deviates, if player 2 can uh, deviate to from, uh, from V1, he can deviate to something less, he can deviate to something less, but if the deviation is greater than V2, he is still getting the object and as long as he is getting the object, his payoff is remaining same at V2 minus V2 that is 0. By bidding more again he is still getting the object, so the payoff remains same 0. If he bids equal to V2 or less than V2, then what happens? Then he is not getting the object, but even if he is not getting the object, his payoff is remaining 0. So, by, uh, by deviating player 2 cannot uh, improve the payoff. Uh, so, from player 2's point of view this is uh, optimal. From player 1's point of view, <coughs> is this optimal? Player 1 is bidding V2. Uh, now, he can get the object if he bids more than V1. But if he bids more than V1, what happens? Suppose B1 is more than V1, what happens to U1 then? u1 is equal to minus v1 
this is the valuation and this is the price that he pays because player 2 is beating v1. So, his payoff remains 0 even if he gets the object and uh, obviously by doing something else by uh, bidding less than uh, v1 uh, he is not getting the object and therefore in fact this is true even if it is equal to v1. So, by bidding less than v1 he is not getting the object so the payoff remains at 0. Hence uh, by uh, deviating the player 1 is not being better off and this is true for other players also that is player 3, 4 and uh, all of them can get the object, but if they get the object in fact their uh, payoff is going to be negative because v i minus v 1 will be the payoff and where i is and we know this to be a negative uh, thing. So, uh, this set of actions is indeed a Nash equilibrium. Now, <coughs> this is something uh, which is uh, a little bit curious because in this Nash equilibrium what player 2 is doing is bidding more than his valuation. Uh, that is he is bidding v1 which is greater than his valuation which is v2 and it may seem a little unnatural because a player is risking the case uh, player is risking a lot in fact if uh, he is bidding more than the valuation because if the second highest is also more than the valuation then he is going to the first player is going to make a loss. Uh, in this equilibrium he is not making a loss because the second highest is equal to v2. So, uh, player 2 is just breaking even, uh, but nevertheless it seems a little unlikely that any player will bid more than the valuation <laughs> uh, because it becomes a little risky. And this idea is sought to be captured by the following proposition that in second price auction. for any player i v i weekly dominates all other actions. So, for any player i if that player bids v i uh, that is weakly better than bidding anything else uh, in some case which means that in some cases uh, this person i will be strictly better off by not bidding anything else and in some cases he will be indifferent if he bids uh, v 1 compared to any other bid. Uh, to to exactly show what it how we can uh, like how we can make this proposition is the following suppose in this line i am representing b bar b bar is the uh, highest bit of other players if i take out the player i and suppose here is vi Now, if b bar is less than v i then player 1 player i will get the object suppose b bar is here and he will get the object and the payoff that he gets is this much where this value is same as this value. Similarly, if b bar is here this value is same as this value and therefore, by connecting all these points I get the line which represents the payoff of uh, layer i.
and uh, if b bar is equal to v i, uh, it does not matter whether i gets the object or does not get the object, uh, the payoff remains 0, uh, because even if he gets the object, the price that he pays is equal to v i, so the, the net payoff is 0. If b bar is greater than v i, obviously, is not getting the object, so payoff is 0, so it remains coincided with the axis. So, this is the case of v i is, uh, is equal to the, the person is suppose bidding equal to v i then what happens. <coughs> suppose the person is not bidding v i but less than v i. Suppose, he is bidding b i dashed. Now, if he is bidding b i dashed, then if the other players valuation, other players highest uh, bid is less than this b i dashed, then he is getting the object uh, obviously and the price that he is paying is the difference between v i and uh, that that uh, b dashed. So, this part is same as this part. So, this is 45 degree line once again, but if b bar is greater than b dashed, then this person is not going to get the object. So, at this point it stops here and uh, after this b bar is greater than b i dashed, the person is not getting the object therefore, the payoff is going to coincide with the horizontal axis. Remember if he had bid equal to v in these cases he could have got more than what he is getting right now. So, this dotted line is what he, he could get if he had bid equal to v. What happens if he bids more than So, suppose b i dashed is here. Now, obviously, for all this values of b bar, this is b bar, for all these values of b bar which are less than v i, uh, this 45 degree line will denote his payoff. Now, if his uh, bid is b i dashed and b bar is here, then he is getting the object, but he is getting the object and his net payoff in that case is negative, it is v i minus b bar. So, I have this extension of this 45 degree line here and this goes all the way until I reach b i dashed. So, I am basically venturing into the negative territory, which I was not doing here. And that means, by comparing all these three uh, possible cases, the person is at his best, he is doing the optimal thing by bidding uh, only v i, by not bidding something more. If he bids something uh, more, then in some cases he is worse off. Uh, if he bids less, uh, again in some cases, uh, he can be foregoing a payoff which he could have earned if he had bid v1, v i. So, that is the idea. So, in terms of this, this is v i and suppose I am considering this v i dashed which is less than v i. Uh, if b dashed is here, I could have earned this value by bidding v i, 
by bidding b i dash I am not getting that value because this good is going to someone else uh, that is the idea. So, uh, bidding one's valuation v i is weakly better than bidding someone some other uh, valuation. Uh, obviously, <coughs> if b, I, b dash is b bar is here uh, it does not matter whether a person is bidding b i dash or v i in both cases the person is getting the object and the payoff is uh, this much. So, in some cases the payoff from both the actions from these two actions uh, are the same, uh, but in some cases v i is giving the person a better payoff that is why this is a weakly dominating action. Uh, and this is true for any bit which is greater than v i also that is why we are saying that uh, v i weakly dominates all actions all other actions. Let us do uh, one exercise which is a generalization of this framework find all the Nash equilibria of a second price sealed bid auction with two players. We have seen that there are plenty of possibilities of Nash equilibria here uh, and in particular it, it is not necessary that person 1 will get the object, it may happen that person 2 uh, gets the object. Uh, so, if I take a simpler case of 2 people not n people uh, just 2 bidders, then uh, how will the complete set of Nash equilibria look like. So, let us try to solve this problem. So, players 2 bidders actions their bids B 1 and B 2 non negative numbers preferences each likes to maximize payoff and uh, ui that is the payoff of player i is vi minus bj if b i is greater than b j or b i is equal to b j and i is less than j is equal to 0 if b i is less than b j if your bit is less or b i is equal to b j and i is greater than j. So, this is uh, the the payoff function of, uh, of player i, i can be 1, i can be 2. We need to find out uh, what is the Nash equilibrium. So, we shall go along the familiar way, we shall try to find out the best response functions and uh, try to see at what areas or what points the best response function of these two players are intersecting with each other. So, for player i <coughs> b i b j 
this is what we need to find out. Uh, remember what is important here is how uh, different b j this small b j is compared to the valuation of player i. If uh, for player 1 suppose, uh, if b j that is a beta player 2 is less than v 1, uh, in that case it will be worthwhile for player 1 to outbid his rival. And how does he uh, outbid the rival? He bids either equal to his rival or he bids more than the rival. Uh, in both the cases, uh, he is indifferent because he is getting the object and paying the price which is same as B2. So, uh, let us write down the best response function instead of the general case, write down the best response function of player 1. So, this is B1. Because the things are not symmetric. That is why you are writing these things, uh, t, these two best response functions separately. Is equal to B1 such that B1 is greater than or equal to B2 if uh, B2 is less than V1. If B2 is equal to V1, uh, then by bidding less, the player 1 is getting 0. By bidding equal or less, greater than uh, B2 also, B1, B1 is greater than equal to 0 if B2 is equal to V1. <coughs> In this case, by bidding anything, player 1 is getting no payoff, he is getting 0 payoff. Uh, so, he can bid anything, there is no maximum to his payoff function. <coughs> and uh, what happens if B2 is strictly greater than V1? In that case, player 1 will like to lose the object, because if he gets the object, then the price that he will be paying will be more than his valuation which is not good for him. So, in this case player 1 will be bidding something strictly less than B2 if B2 is greater than V1. Right. So, this is the best response function of player 1. What about the best response function of player 2? Uh, likewise, if B1 is less than V2, uh, then it is worthwhile for player 2 to win the object. So, he will win the object if he bids strictly more than the other people's bid. If B1 is strictly less than V2. If B1 is equal to V2, again uh, player one, player 2 gets nothing, even if he gets the object, he is getting nothing. If he does not get the object, obviously, he is not getting anything. So, in this case, B2 is this and finally, If uh, B1 is greater than V2, player 2 will like to lose the object. So, in this case, he loses the object by bidding less than B1 or equal to B1. So, this is the complete uh, best response functions of two players. We shall now plot these two best response functions and try to see. Uh, what are the overlaps?
So, this is P 1, this is P 2, remember V 1 is greater than V 2, this is suppose V 2, this is suppose V 1. Uh, if B2 is less than V1, then player 1 will like to be more than B2. So, I have this 45 degree line dotted. If B2 is less than V1, player 1 is bidding more than player 2. more than and equal to also. So, this line is included here. If B 2 is just equal to V 1 any value. So, this is the 45 degree li line point. This horizontal line is included. <coughs> if uh, B 2 is greater than V 1, B 1 should be strictly less than B 2. So, this uh, 45 degree line is no longer included. Okay. This is the best response function of player 1. Player 2's best response function if B 1 is less than V 2, then B 2 is strictly greater than B 1. So, this is the V 2 point. I have this vertical line here and all these points will be included but the points on the 45 degree line will not be included secondly uh, if b2 is equal to b1 is equal to v2 b2 can be of any value this is the vertical line and if b1 is greater than v2 uh, B2 is less than equal to B1. So, this line is included. So, we have basically two sets of Nash equilibria here. Uh, one is the first set, let us first describe this set which is on the northwest. Uh, B 1 is less than equal to V 2 and B 2 is greater than equal to V 1 and if I describe this set B 1 is greater than equal to V 2. B 2 is less than equal to V 1 and B 1 is greater than equal to B 2. Uh, this line is basically 
important I have to point, consider points only to the right of this line. So, this is a set of Nash equilibrium and this is a set of Nash equilibrium. Uh, it is obvious why these are Nash equilibria, just a little bit of discussion is required here. Uh, let us consider this Nash equilibria, this set of Nash equilibria. Uh, here player 1 is bidding something less than or equal to V2, player 2 is bidding uh, either equal to V1 or greater than V1. So, uh, player 2 will get the object in this case and uh, player 2 will pay a price which is equal to B1. Uh, so, if B1 is less than V2, then player 2 will make some positive payoff. Uh, and uh, can he deviate and be better off? If he deviates to something less than uh, V1, uh, as long as this less, B, uh, less than V1 is greater than V2, he is still getting the object and his payoff is remaining the same. If he bids less than B1, then he loses the object, so his payoff becomes 0. Uh, so, uh, by deviating he is not being better off. Uh, what about player 1? Player 1 is not getting the object. If he wants to get the object, he will have to bid more than B2. But if he bids more than B2, either he gets 0 payoff when B2 is equal to V1 <coughs> or he gets a negative payoff when B2 is greater than V1 and he outbids uh, player 2. So, by deviating he is not getting any positive payoff and so therefore, this is a Nash equilibrium. By the same logic, uh, this other thing is also an Nash equilibrium. Here, player 1 is getting the object by bidding more than V2 and player 2 is bidding something less than V1, but at the same time, B1 is greater than B2. So, player 1 is getting the object and he is paying a price which is, uh, which is equal to B2 and B2 we know is less than equal to V1. So, it is either positive or 0 uh, player 1's payoff. Uh, by deviating, uh, he can lose to player 2, that is the only thing he can do. But if he loses to player 2, his payoff becomes 0. So, which is not uh, in any case better than what he is getting right now. By the same kind of logic, we can show that player 2 also by deviating cannot be better off. So, these are uh, the complete set of Nash equilibria in case of two person uh, second price auction. Let us do one more exercise and then we shall talk about some other sort of uh, uh, auction. This is the exercise. An action affects each of two people. So, it is a two person game. The right to choose the action is sold in a second price auction. That is the two people simultaneously submit bids. The one who submits the higher bid chooses her favorite action and pays to the auctioneer the amount bid by the other person who pays nothing. For i is equal to 1 or 2, the payoff of uh, person I when the action is A and the, pers and the person I pays M is U I A minus M. In the game that models this situation, find for each player the, a bid that weekly dominates all the players other bids. So, in short there are two players. and they are bidding with each other. So, let us uh, call these bids as, as B1 and B2. Now, whoever is uh, winning this auction, second price auction uh, is getting to choose an action A and if he chooses the action A, suppose I wins, suppose
then the payoff for i is u i a minus b j, j is not equal to i. And uh, when I is choosing, so I is choosing A. When I is choosing A, it affects the payoff of the other player also. The other player gets UJA because this A is entering his, uh, his utility, his payoff function also though he is not paying in anything in this case because he is losing the auction. So, this is the setting and we have to find out uh, an action uh, for each player <coughs> a bid that weakly dominates the player's other bids. So, uh, I do not have much time today just before we wrap up this lecture let me introduce another kind of auctions that we shall be discussing in detail in the next lecture which is called the first price auction. First price sold bid auction. Now, unlike the second price sale bid auction here the story is the following the people are submitting their bids <coughs> and the person who is submitting the highest bid is winning the uh, good, is obtaining the good. The price that he is paying here is not the second price, but the price that he himself is quoting. So, uh, the price is equal to the bid that he himself has submitted. So, this is uh, uh, the case and this is also known as uh, the Dutch auction. The other one that we had discussed before, the se second price is known as the English auction. This is called the du Dutch auction because uh, the, the, the counterpart, the sequential counterpart of this auction, if this auction is conducted sequentially, uh, it has a real life example and in Holland this used to be a common practice that the price that is announced by the auctioneer it does not start from below, but it starts from above and it, then it comes down. So, the auctioneer announces a very high price and asks the bidders whether is there anyone who is ready to pay that price. If he finds no one, then he reduces the price a little bit. Uh, as soon as he gets any particular person who is ready to pay that price, that person gets the good and pays that price uh, which he said that he will be ready to pay. So, in this case uh, you see the story that we had, it is a competition between the two highest bidders and the highest bidder is going to pay a price which is very close to the price offered by the second highest bidder does not hold. Here the highest bidder is himself paying the price which he is quoting, second highest bidder is, uh, does, is not material, it, he does not matter in this uh, particular outcome. So, that is why it is called a Dutch auction. Uh, we are going to look into the other aspects of this touch auction in the next lecture. Thank you. Why is bidding one's own valuation weakly dominates other bids in the second price sale bid auction? So, uh, in second price. Still bid auction price one pays if she gets the object is not equal to B i. Okay. So, because this is the price that I pay if I get the object is not my bidding, but the second highest uh, but the price uh, of the uh, highest price of the other players. So, this is why this is called second uh, uh, price sale bid auction. Uh, the, the it might happen that the other price is less than what I, I have bid. 
uh, now if the price that I am paying is not my bid then bidding more or less I am not affecting my payoff. which is V i minus B bar, B bar is decided by someone else, V i is given from outside. So, U i is uh, independent of the bit that I submit. However, by changing B i, changing my bit, I can change the chance of my getting the object. Okay. So, that is the only difference it makes uh, to the payoff by bidding more or less. Uh, now, <coughs> there might be some cases, okay, if I consider B j which is greater than V i. Now, here V i if V i is equal to B i then uh, the player may not get the object compared to the case compared to B j. So, here is B j. So, in some cases by bidding B j I will get the object, but by bidding V i I will not get the object. But in those cases, bidding B i is strictly worse, because these are the cases where this will happen. Uh, if B bar is between V i and B j, in these cases by bidding B j I will get the object, by bidding V i I will not get the object. But if I get the object, I get a negative payoff of this much. So, bidding V i is always better. In all other cases, suppose B bar is here or B bar is here, it does not make a difference. Bidding V i is same as bidding B j. Uh, so, therefore, V i is uh, weakly dominating B j if B j is greater than V i. By a similar logic, I can show that V i weakly dominates B j if B j is less than V i. Briefly describe the first price seal bid auction. <coughs> so, here players n bidders actions set of bids which are non-negative numbers okay. and preferences is given by So, in these two cases where if uh, I bid more than the other players bid then I get the object and the price that I pay is same as my bid which is B i and my payoff is therefore, V i minus B i or it might happen that uh, I am bidding same as the highest bid of other players, but in that case also I can get the object if my index is less than the uh, players who have bid B bar. In that case also I will get the object and get a payoff of this. Uh, if these two conditions are not satisfied, then I get 0. 
uh, that is two conditions means if my bid is not the highest bid or uh, my bid is the highest bid, but there is another player whose bid is equal to my bid and whose index is uh, less than my index. In that case also I will lose the object, so I will get 0. Mm -hmm.